Hello everybody and welcome to another one of Mr. Deeping Science Lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book, a pen, and in your books I'd like to write down today's title, Food Chains and Food Webs. We are starting today's lesson with a statement, plants need glucose for energy and growth. What I want you to do for your starter activity is to suggest where do plants get their glucose from. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you finish we'll go through the answers together. Have you got an answer? Our plants get their glucose from a process called photosynthesis and we're going to look at that in a bit more detail in today's lesson. Also in today's lesson we're going to be describing what a food chain is and we're going to compare that food chain to a food web. We're then going to construct a food web from a series of food chains and we're going to explain why most food chains do not exceed five energy transfers. We said that plants make their own glucose by photosynthesis and we refer to organisms that create their own glucose as producers. Animals that eat our producers are known as primary consumers and it's also worth noting that if an organism only eats plants it is known as an herbivore. And when this caterpillar eats this leaf the energy stored in the leaf is transferred to the caterpillar and we represent this with an arrow. Animals that eat our primary consumers are known as secondary consumers it's also worth noting that if an organism only eats other animals, it is known as a carnivore. So when this sparrow eats this caterpillar, the energy from the caterpillar is transferred to the sparrow, and we represent this with an arrow. Animals that eat our secondary consumers are known as tertiary consumers. That doesn't mean that these tertiary consumers are just eating secondary consumers. They can also consume other primary consumers. So when this sparrowhawk eats this sparrow, the energy from the sparrow is transferred to the sparrowhawk, and we represent this with an arrow. Now we have constructed a food chain. Our plant is eaten by our caterpillar, our caterpillar is eaten by our sparrow, and our sparrow is eaten by our sparrowhawk. For your first hat, I'd like to answer the following questions. One, what do the arrows in this food chain represent? I want you to identify the producer, and I want you to identify the predators in this food chain and their prey. If you still need a challenge, I'd like to know why the caterpillar is not considered a predator, and I'd like to identify the herbivores in this food chain and the carnivores. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answers? So the arrows represent the transfer of energy, remember, the energy from the plant is transferred to the caterpillar. The energy from the caterpillar is transferred to the sparrow. The energy from the sparrow is transferred to the sparrow hawk. The producer in this food chain is the plant because it produces its own glucose through that process of photosynthesis. Our predator-prey relationships in this food chain are the sparrow and the caterpillar, where the sparrow is the predator and the caterpillar is the prey, as well as the sparrow hawk and the sparrow, where the sparrow hawk is the predator and the sparrow is the prey. The caterpillar is not considered a predator because plants don't move and so caterpillars don't have to hunt the plant. Looking at this food chain we can see that the caterpillar is only eating producers so that makes it an herbivore and our sparrow and our sparrowhawk are both eating other consumers so they are our carnivores. So now we have described what a food chain is but we haven't compared it to a food web in our ecosystem there is a lot more than four organisms to consider and many of our consumers are going to prey on more than one of those organisms. A food web is a combination of all the food chains that happen in an ecosystem. You can see our original food chain, our plants are eaten by our caterpillars, our caterpillars are eaten by our sparrow and our sparrow is eaten by our sparrow hawk. But we've also got another food chain. Our plants are eaten by our rabbits and our rabbits are eaten by this fox. We've got our plants being eaten by our snails, snails being eaten by the sparrow, and the sparrow being eaten by a sparrowhawk. Every food chain in this food web has to start with a producer and end on one of the organisms that isn't eaten by anything else. We call these the apex predators. For your next task, I would like to find as many food chains as you can in this food web. If you want a challenge, I'd also like to identify the producer, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers in this food web. 
I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you've finished, we'll go through the answers together. Got your food chains? Let's have a look at some of them. So starting with our producer, our plants are eaten by our rabbit, which are eaten by our fox. And it ends there because there's no more energy transfer arrows coming from the fox. We can also have the plants is eaten by the caterpillar, is eaten by the frog, is eaten by the fox. We can have plants is eaten by the caterpillar, is eaten by the frog, is eaten by the hawk. We can have the plants eaten by the caterpillar, eaten by the vole, which is also eaten by the sparrow hawk. We can also have the plants eaten by the caterpillar, which are eaten by the sparrow, which are eaten by our sparrow hawk. And then one more, we've got our plants, which can be eaten by our snail, which are eaten by the sparrow, which are eaten by our sparrow hawk. Now our food chains always begin with the producer. So if we look at all of our food chains, we can see our plant is our producer. Our primary consumers are everything that appears second in our food chains. So from top to bottom, you can see the rabbit is considered a primary consumer. Our caterpillar and our snail are also considered primary consumers. They are eating our producer. Our secondary consumers is going to be everything that appears third in our food chain. So our sparrows, our vole, our frogs, and in that first food chain, our fox. Our tertiary consumer is everything that appears fourth in a food chain. And you can see in our second food chain that our fox is considered a tertiary consumer. This is an example where an organism can be a tertiary consumer, but also eat primary consumers. And our hawk is also fourth on four of these food chains and is a tertiary consumer. We also call these organisms at the top of these food webs apex predators, because they are at the top. So in our food web, our fox and our sparrow hawk are considered our apex predators. So now we've looked at a food web and we've compared it to a food chain. Now that we've taken a food web and we've taken out all the food chains, we're going to try and do it the other way around. I've got five food chains and what I would like you to do is to construct the food web from these food chains. Remember our food web always has to start with a producer and end with an apex predator. And if you want even more of a challenge, I would also like you to explain why every chain begins with grass and suggest what is meant by the term apex predator, which in this food web is going to be our vulture. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you finish, we'll go through the answers together. Have you constructed your food web? Let's have a look at it together. Let's start by drawing out our first food chain. Our grass is eaten by our grasshopper, is eaten by our hawk, is eaten by our coyote, and that is eaten by our vulture. Let's have a look at our second food chain. Our grass is already on our food web, and that is eaten by our mouse, that's a new addition, which is eaten by our hawk, which is already there, which is then eaten by the coyote, which is eaten by the vulture. Our third food chain, our grass is eaten by our mouse, which is already there. Our mouse is also eaten by our coyote, so we need to add an additional energy transfer arrow, and that coyote is eaten by that vulture. Food chain number four then, our grass is eaten by our mouse, and our mouse is eaten by our vulture, so we just need to add that energy transfer arrow from the mouse to the vulture. Our last food chain then, starting with the grass, is eaten by our mouse, that's already there, is eaten by our snake, we're adding another organism, and that snake is also added to our vulture, which is already on our food web, so we've just got to add our energy transfer arrow. Now remember, every food web has to begin with a producer, that's why every food chain begins with grass. Our vulture is our apex predator because it is not eaten by anything else. It is top of the food chain. So now we have constructed a food web from a series of food chains. Now we're going to explain why it's rare to see more than five energy transfers in a food chain. In our food chain, only about 10% of energy is transferred from one organism to the next. So 10% of the plant consumed by the caterpillar is going to be transferred. 10% of the energy in the caterpillar eaten by the sparrow is going to be transferred. Now if the amount of plant consumed by our caterpillar contains 12,400 kilojoules of energy, how much of that energy is going to be transferred to our sparrow hawk? And if you still want a challenge, I want you to use that information to suggest why there are rarely more than five energy transfers in a food chain. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and when you finish, we'll go through the answers together. calculated that? So our plant contains 12,400 kilojoules of energy. 
only 10% of that is transferred to our caterpillar. So we do 12,400 divided by 10, and that gives us 1,240 kilojoules. Our sparrow eats the caterpillar, and only 10% of that value is gonna be transferred to the sparrow. So we do 1,240 divided by 10, gives us 124 kilojoules. And when our sparrow hawk eats our sparrow, only 10% of that 124 kilojoules is going to be transferred from the sparrow to the sparrow hawk. So we take 124 kilojoules, we divide it by 10, and we get 12.4 kilojoules. Why then is there rarely more than five transfers in a food chain? That is because there wouldn't be enough energy transferred to the apex predator in order for it to stay alive. So now we can explain why most food chains do not exceed five energy transfers. We've got one more task we need to complete before we finish this lesson. We have this food chain, this seaweed is eaten by this clownfish, this clownfish is eaten by that penguin, and that penguin is eaten by this polar bear. But there is something wrong with this food chain, and I want you to try and identify what it is. And if you want a bit more of a challenge, we've got this at the bottom. If carnivores eat meat and herbivores eat plants, producers, what do our omnivores eat? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answer together. Have you got your suggestions? Now this food chain is wrong because all of these different organisms live in different habitats. The biggest clue here is our penguin and our polar bear which live on opposite ends of the earth. I'm pretty sure given the chance our polar bear would eat our penguin but they don't live in the same habitat, so they're never gonna meet. And if you got any suggestions about what omnivores would eat, this is something that consumes both producers and other consumers. So it eats both plants and animals. And that brings our session to an end. I hope you've had a great lesson, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well, so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon, and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and I appreciate all the support. I'll see you next time.